And I don't care. Would you get it out of the way? Yeah, it's just rain. Oh my god, football! We can't play in the rain. Like no, I, the game is played in the elements. So soft. Yeah, it makes it sound so soft. But but there, like on the Purdy thing, he was a roller coaster uh, on he Saturday was. night. But the mental fortitude to stay calm, and if you see the juxtaposition between him and Jordan Love on the final couple of possessions, you know. Jordan Love panicked on that first down play. Yeah, there, there's no other way to put he it. Did. He made a really bad decision trying to do too much. And you look, whether whether you could say Purdy's teardrop to Jennings was a lucky throw, a good throw, a great throw, bad anticipation, unfortunate, great play by Jennings, it worked. Okay? And his two throws, the one to Jennings, the little dump off to, to, to Jennings earlier and Kittle earlier, the throw to Ayuk. I mean, he had some big-time throws, and he could have easily folded mentally given how rough that game was. We haven't even talked enough about the rollout throw to George Kittle in the first quarter. Yeah, that was huge. That touchdown pass, that was a dive. Right when the Niners needed it to take a 7-3 lead. Uh, here's what Purdy, he was asked about what was clicking on the final drive of the game for the 49ers. At the end of the day, I think I was just able to go through progressions and get to the check down efficiently and, and move the chains and, and stay up rather than get behind. Obviously, we got to a third down. B.A. was clutch on it and made a great play, and you need that throughout a drive. But, you know, I think early on in the game, there was just moments where, you know, the check down was there, and, and I'm missing, I was missing the check downs. And so their defense did a good job with playing soft, you know, keeping everything in front of them, sort of taking away our shots and stuff. And as a quarterback, man, you got to be efficient and, and hit the check downs. And so at the end, I was able to do that. Um, O-line did a great job. Boys did a great job getting open, and we found a way. And then George Kittle, very interesting yeah, here. Really he interesting. broke down this year's team versus 2019. Take a listen. Winning's fun. Being able to win in adversity when things aren't going your way, uh, it's something you have to learn as a team. And if you look back at this season compared to, like, 2019, like, 2019, every single game that we played kind of seemed like it was, like, the stress was as high as possible. We had to figure out how to win every single game. Something bad would happen, and we still figure out how to win. This season it was... We basically blew everybody out, and then the close games we didn't win. And so I was like, okay, well, what a better time to learn how to win a gritty game than in the playoffs? <laughs> you know, just a little bit of stress here and there for everybody. That's George Kittle. Did, did you the see game. the outfit he was wearing? I did. I did. I, I just, I'm just, I could never even attempt to look at an outfit, let alone try an outfit on like that. Why not? Somebody some in his camp's got to tell him. Talk. You got some swagger. You got some swag. The Canadian Shasky. tuxedo. Come on, Shasky. the jeans. You can't pull that off. Th this is not the the no limit cash money records hey. of the early two thousands. Jean top, jean bottom. I'm fashionable. I, I don't know. I thought that outfit was was a lot. <laughs> Good for George Kittle that he could pull it off. I couldn't even look at it. Brianna in Detroit thinks it's a, it's a lot. Body is sliding the DMs to did, say hi. Did anyone see? Am I tripping? Mm. I'm. I guess I'm the only one. Who no, saw no, okay. we saw it. I, it was I don't just, mind it. It was a lot. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a little I, I was a little in shock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, all these guys they wear outfits. And I, I know, just like, I, wow. you're right. You're all right. across the league, man. I just think, damn, buddy can buy you a lot, man. Buddy buys these dudes some things, and buddy can cover it over, cover it up. I mean, some guys can pull it off, man. Some guys can pull it off. Let's go to. Uh, James in Santa Rosa. James, what's happening? <laughs> James, I know. So right. Good Somebody. morning, fellas. What's I up? I just want to bring up the vibes uh, of this show because uh, I, I just feel like we have one of the greatest comebacks in 49ers history and nobody's even happy about it. It's like I'm starting to understand. Like, I'm not saying that we are, but I'm starting to understand why they're calling us the whiners because we just all I hear is complaining about the, the team. And man, I, I feel like I'm feeling really happy, feeling good, and I feel like the Packers were I had underrated them. What, so what are we? What have we complained about today, James and Santa Rosa? Because I, I don't know. I just last hour just went off saying it's surviving events, and I'm not apologizing for playoff wins. So I don't know what we're, uh, we're breaking I'm, down the game, I'm, but we're not complaining about a win. Trust me. I was more talking about Chavsky. Oh, well, call him out there. Don't throw me that ball. Doug, so you watched that, that game? Don't call just, me out. You were thrilled? Like, <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on, life. James and Santa Rosa. To call out Chavsky. Yeah. Yeah, stall me out here. Don't James, throw James, me in wait, that same right, ball. Let me guess. Are you, you 25? No. So you were thrilled? Actually... I wasn't thrilled, but I also want to be positive and like I feel like we played as bad as we could possibly play, and I feel like we're we were the number the one the seed. We kicked the crap out of everyone. We had three weeks off. We were <laughs> ten point favorites, and that game was crazy. Yeah, excuse me for being emotional. That's how I watched the Niners. Uh, newsflash, Bonte. Not sure if you know this. 
This team <laughs> drives me insane. That's why I love it, okay? And my relationship with it is irrationally emotional, okay? For all you people like, I'm just so happy. At a, that I want to win the Super Bowl, okay? This isn't the first iteration of the Shanahan era. We have knocked on the door and knocked on the door, and I'm so thankful and happy that we're here. <laughs> but, my God, there's an ultimate goal here, all right? And if you play like you did, and I'm glad we won because we just move on. But, like, if you play like that again, like – we we escaped by the skin of right. our teeth here. That's all I'm saying. I'm keeping it 100. <laughs> That's how we talk. That's how we, we experience sports. Jason. And anybody who experienced it differently, well, good for you for being more rational. That's not how I consume it. James, the floor is yours again. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not here trying to hate or anything. I'm just trying to bring positive. Like, I'm trying to make us, you know, bring up your, uh, and bring down your anxiety a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Keep I'm going, like, James. Keep cooking. Think about it from this way. If you if you keep looking about it this way, we played as horrible as we could. Play. Everyone played bad. Everyone had mistakes. Debo went out. It has all the hard hallmarks of a 49er heartbreak. I've had my heart broken so many times. How many games like that have we lost in mm. the playoffs? Mm, James, Every- you, you, you're making a lot of sense. Where we were 10-point favorites <laughs> and the number one seed hey, with listen. a month off? Hey, listen, all I ask. Only one, 1987. All I ask from here on out. <laughs> if you have a problem with Shasky or me, just call us out. Don't lump us yeah, together. If you're going to come at the king, just come. And if you're going to come for the squire over here, just come. Just call out Shasky. Just call him out. I'm here. And I wear my emotions on my sleeve. And I'm not going to be apologetic no. about it. Brock Purdy was a roller coaster he on was Saturday. No, no, seriously. I'm, not, I, like, I, Listen, I'm, I'm just I? telling you through my prism, I was up, I was down, I was losing it. I was at anybody who consumes sports, they're like, I'm just sitting back, I'm just watching. Brock was fine. Like, at the end, it was great. Thank God we won. I woke up the next day and go, I cannot believe they won that well, game. No, I, I did. That's all I, I kept thinking. That over and over. I can't believe they won that game. I said that over and over yesterday. I can't believe they won the football game. I couldn't believe it walking out. I can't believe it this morning. But we're here. They're going to the NFC title game for the fourth time in five years. However, I sent out a tweet yesterday because this is true. And I don't know why. we. It's, it's really strange to me uh, where the sports fans' head is at. Not everybody. Not everybody. But, like, Right away, people started comparing Brock's performance to a performance Joe Montana had. And I'm thinking to myself, that's nothing about that football game that reminded me of Joe Montana. Well, it's just unfair to Brock. Right? No, it's unfair it's to unfair Brock. It's unfair to Brock. It's unfair to Let Brock, but, but that's, not being honest. that's not being honest, though. That's not being honest. But I, t- I sit down a tweet saying, it's okay to praise Pur- Purdy while critiquing him. It doesn't have to be black and white when we discuss this play. It's not, hey, Purdy was great, or Purdy was all bad. Purdy had an up-and-down football game. Which he admitted Bonte. afterwards. He was inconsistent. He threw a couple oh no throws. Purdy was out of sorts. And then he woke up in and the fourth he, quarter yes. and outplayed Jordan Love when we had to have it. When we had needed to have a touchdown, Brock Purdy led us to a touchdown drive. But you can't not look at the first three quarters and say, boy, there was. Bonte, this uh, is how I watched the game. I was watching the game because, come on, do something. I went, oh my God, where is he throwing it? Like, that's what people were doing. Right. And then, oh my God, what a dime to George Kittle. Right. Place is going crazy. Like, I was standing and pacing and kneeling and jumping. and Like, that's how – it's the playoffs. It's the Niners. This is the number one team in right. the market, okay? The first team that taught me what it was to be a winner in this market, and they've been on a 30-year drought. And this team's been knocking on heaven's door over and over and over and over again. And I thought this was the year where the, the, the stars were aligned. And yeah, that was a stressful Saturday night. Thank God they won. Because you know what I didn't want to do? Oh, quarterback, head coach talk all off season. Because if you don't think that was coming, then you and I weren't watching the same right. game. Right? No, it was going to be a lot of that talk. But we get to stave it off. Our text story Thank was going God. crazy. But we we survived an event. But Purdy wasn't great, and that's okay. Guess what? Not everything's going to be 350 yards and four touchdowns in a playoff exactly. game. Exactly. The other team gets paid too, and the other team doesn't want to have their season ended. And they were on the 49ers game plan. Whether it was more Shanahan or Brock Purdy, it wasn't a pretty game by no means whatsoever. They got outplayed in every phase of the game. Special teams, offense, and defense. But you know what? The Niners were able to hang around, hang around, hang around, hang around, and they stole one at the end. Now they're playing the Detroit Lions next Sunday for the NFC Championship. That's what it is. But we can be honest and say Purdy didn't have a great game because he didn't. You know who had a great game? My son, LJ. All the screaming, all the yelling, getting passed around like a hot potato. Not one cry. No, that's good. Not one cry. That's good. It's it's good. That guy just skunked you. (laughs) 
<laughs> See, now I'm seeing this. In the 81 NFC Championship oh, game, Montana it. didn't have a great just, game, but, but he came but, through but, at the but, end. But I, However, though, that was an all-time Dallas Cowboys defense. But, but Ain't he, nobody going to the Hall of Fame for the Green Bay Packer defense. Oh, Maybe Jair Alexander. Bonte. Maybe. I was, I, I've been at a lot of playoff games. When the Niners beat the New York Giants come from behind, I didn't run out of the stadium and go, just like Montana in 81. When Colin Kaepernick ran for 200 yards and threw for 300, I didn't run out of the stadium, just like Montana in 81. Right. When Alex Smith, had a subpar game, right. but the greatest six minutes of his life at the end of the New Orleans game. I didn't run as a, just like Montana 81. Let these guys carve well, out their own legacies. Well, Stop know, comparing them to ghosts. Well, I'm getting people tweet me about fair. Super Bowl 23. Super Bowl 23, look at Montana. He almost threw a pick. He also threw for 357 yards and didn't look overmatched as well as he had two Super Bowl rings already in his safe. So Montana deserved a little more leeway during Super Bowl 23. Brock's still a young player. Exactly, let it but be boy, Brock. But boy, the book is still out on him. We still got to make a decision at some point whether or not he's going to be the long-term answer for the 49ers at quarterback. We that, that's a real thing. If, he, if Brock Purdy didn't come through on Saturday, the conversation this morning would have been, well, boy, what do you do? Do you go after Kirk Cousins? Do you learn Tom Brady out of retirement? Oh, what do you do at quarterback? Oh. That would have been a conversation after Saturday's game because of that performance. But but thankfully, he put together a great fourth quarter, and Shanahan and him made sweet music, and, and they won that game. And, and, and Dre Greenlaw came and you through. you know what? Even after the 49ers won that football game, I guarantee you there's some Niner fans out there. What I said. For sure there is. You know what? Jordan Love or Brock Purdy, long-term future. Jordan Love's attributes. I bet you there's a lot more Niner fans saying, boy, Jordan Love looked pretty good. And I know it was the fourth quarter in his second ever playoff game, and he threw some bad interceptions. Bad. But Green Bay's feeling good about their future. I'm just thankful we're in the NFC. There you go. That's I mean, because I, see, I, see, I look. look at the AFC. No, I'm just being honest. Like I look at the AFC long term, and I say to myself, thank God we're in the NFC. It's 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 clearly the quote-unquote easier conference. It's got less of the superstar quarterbacks. Did you see that game last night? Right. Josh Allen versus Mahomes. It's like a video game. That was quarterback porn. And I'm watching the two. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes is a match made in quarterback heaven. Yeah. Those two, I mean, unbelievable. Kelsey, I mean, Kelsey's been not even near what Kelsey's been the last right. couple of years. And then last night, boom, two touchdowns. Yep. So, I'm yeah, I'm very thankful we're in the NFC. That was Jordan Love's second playoff game. That was a team that had a ton of rookies and second-year players. And LaFleur impressed the hell out of me. We were lucky to get away and, and get a win in that game. You and I'm what, very though? thankful for you it. You know what, though? <laughs> we survive in advance, baby. Thank God. I don't know why. Uncle Ludi's asked me, why was Purdy so off? Rest or pressure? Could be both. Could be the loss of Debo. And Green Bay was in I, his face. I, I, you know, one thing. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know why he struggled so much. Brock Purdy, they didn't have their A game. You, they got knocked off their socks early on in that football game. It really took the rhythm out of the offense. I don't know why Brock was so off. You know, but he woke up in the nick of time in the fourth quarter, that's for sure. Uh, Greg Olson came on with us and was talking about how he throws from a muddied pocket really well. Yep. Um, in this game, he didn't. Uh, he was better yep. when he had time to throw and a, and a free platform. Do you know what, though? One of the biggest plays in the game when he made that throw to Jawan Jennings, he got cracked. Destroyed. That play. That no, he got money, destroyed. That was a muddy pocket. And Brock Purdy came through with a great throw. I like to watch I like to scramble. I'm like the scramble. I was like, yes, and slide. Get down. Uh 888-957-9570. We're gonna break at 9-12 today. 9-12.